Hi everyone. Today I want to show you how you can make a really easy, simple wholemeal sourdough bread just with the cheap wholemeal flour from the supermarket. This loaf cost me $1.37 to make. That's for the ingredients. Um, it couldn't be easier or more affordable. I used a Vardagen loaf tin from Ikea which cost $5.99 but you could head to a charity shop and get any, a second hand bread tin or use any bread tin you like. It is quite a big loaf though so you need a pretty decent sized bread tin. So this bread is made with 5 metric cups of wholemeal flour. If you want to weigh it, it's about 700 grams of flour. I'm purposefully not weighing this though because I just want to show you how easy it is. You don't have to be really precise with it. Just throw it together and it's easy to do. To the flour I add 2 teaspoons of salt. I'm just using the cheap iodized table salt from Aldi. Nothing special. Any old salt will do. And just mix that into the flour. Mix it in really well and then make a little bit of a well in the center. To that you add the water. I use about two and a quarter cups of water plus I added a little bit later. Um, but around two and a quarter, two and a third cups of water is just fine. And then to that you add your sourdough starter. This is just some whole wheat sourdough starter that I had in my fridge from my last bake. And I just add that straight to the water. Make sure you leave a little bit of starter left behind so that you can feed that up and use then, then use that for your next batch of bread. So you want to just mix all of that together now. I just kind of slowly swirl around the starter in the water just to get it to dissolve a little bit. And then once that's incorporated a bit, I then start to mix in the flour. I'm just using a really solid little like a parfait spoon. It's like a teaspoon with a really long handle. I find that works really well. Mix that all through till it kind of becomes a dough. It'll be a bit hard to handle. I don't really touch this with my hands at all. You don't need to. You can if you want to though. I had a tiny bit more water in my cup. I just threw that in. Now I like to scrape down the sides of my bowl with my trusty spatula um, and that just makes it a lot easier to clean up later on. I find that the cleaner my bowl is the easier it is to wash up later. But you don't have to do that, it doesn't matter too much. I couldn't help myself. I had to add a bit more water. I don't know what it is with me and wet dough. I just, I don't know. <laughs> if it's not a certain level of like squidgy gooiness, I'm not happy. I always have to add a bit more, but you don't have to. Just leave it at the, the two and a half, two and a third cups. That's all you really need. And then once you've mixed it, just put a plate on the top so it doesn't dry out. Now before you do anything else, make sure you feed up your starter for your next loaf of bread. I feed mine with five really big heaped teaspoons of flour and then to that I just add enough water to make a paste. If you wanted to weigh it, it would be about 70 grams of water and flour. And that way I've got enough starter left for my next loaf with a little bit left over for the one after that. And the cycle just keeps going. Make sure you mix it all in really well. You want to get all of the little bits of old mature starter off the bottom of the jar and stir that in. I like to scrape down the sides of my jar as well. I think it just helps prevent any mold and keeping your jar really clean basically means you never have to wash it. I can't remember the last time I washed my starter jar. I do wash the lid every now and then um, and I wipe the rim as you can see there but pretty much I just keep using it year in and year out. So there's my bread dough and my starter ready to ferment now. So 
So through the fermentation, and you know, it might take you four hours, it might take you eight hours, it really depends on the weather. But throughout that first rise, that first fermentation period of the dough, the main bulk fermentation, you want to just give it a few stretching folds like I'm just doing here. So you just kind of pull up the side of the dough, stretch it up and then fold it back on itself. This just helps to really improve the structure and the um, consistency of your dough and you'll get a much uh, nicer bread and a better rise if you've put in a few stretch and folds. Make sure you cover it between each one. This is the second one. I think I did three or four on this loaf. You don't have to worry about it too much. Even if you do one, that's better than none. So just do as many as you can, depending on what you're doing, how busy you are. That's the second one. This is the third one. You can see the texture of the dough is changing as it ferments, it gets more kind of fluid and slack. Um, and it gets more gassy. You can see the bread, a bit hard to tell, but it is getting a bit, a bit of gas developing in it now. The dough is ready to shape now. So I think this was about five hours, this bulk fermentation period for this dough. I can't remember now. It was a fairly warm day. It's probably about five or six hours. So I'm just giving it a final stretch and fold. And this is really just to act as a bit of a pre-shaping. And it also is a really good way of getting the dough out of the bowl without tearing the dough. If you do a bit of a stretch and fold, and then I just sprayed my bench with a bit of water so the dough doesn't stick. Uh, yeah, do your stretch and fold and then just tip your dough out and it pops out of the bowl really nicely. Uh, just give this one just a little bit of a pre-shaping, just kind of putting a little bit of tension into it. Nothing too fancy, I'm not the best shaper. <laughs> and then cover it just um, while you're doing other things. So I go and get my bread tin ready, give that a bit of a spray outside. You don't want that spray oil inside your house. So I do that out on my deck. That's just a bit of canola nonstick spray. And then after 10 or 15 minutes or so, when your dough has relaxed, like this is quite relaxed. <laughs> I was playing around with my GoPro camera. So it was probably about 15 minutes. Um, then you just give your dough a bit of a, another pre-shaping and get it ready to go into the tin. So for this, I'm not the best at this, but basically you just kind of want to kind of form a rough um, rectangular shape of, for the dough and then roll it up. So you want to roll this up and that adds some more tension to it so you get a really nice rise and oven spring. This is a huge dough. <laughs> You're going to need a big tin for this dough, but you can adapt the recipe to just make it smaller and use less flour if you want to. But it fits quite well in these big IKEA tins, so it's not a bad size for this tin. Once it's in the tin, then I just sprinkle some flour on the top because I'm going to cover this with a tea towel. And the bit of flour on the top of the dough just stops the towel from sticking. That's the only reason I'm doing that. You could put seeds on it too though if you want. You can put whatever you want on there. Cover that up. Now for the final proof, the second rise before you bake it for this dough, this one was about 90 minutes, but as I said, it was a pretty warm day. Yours might be shorter than that, or it might be a few hours. Really depends on your dough and the weather. You can see my sourdough starter has risen up again, so it goes back in the fridge. When your dough is looking really close to baking, you want to preheat your oven to 220 degrees Celsius or about 430 Fahrenheit. And this is my, my dough, it's ready to bake. It's risen up to the top of the tin and I just pop it in the oven. You'll want to bake this loaf for about 45 to 50 minutes, depending on your oven. Oh my God. Ooh. Wow. That looks like white bread. Hmm. I couldn't help myself. I had to check it halfway through. But here it is. It's all done now. This was after about 
50 minutes I think at 220 Celsius and the bread is done. Look at that, nice and golden. These IKEA tins are great. The anodized aluminium is really conductive, so it, it's um, not only are they light and easy to handle, bread comes out really easy and it cooks evenly all throughout. Beautiful golden crust. I'm really happy with that. That was so easy to make and it's a great loaf of bread. And here we are for the final shot. It's such a beautiful loaf of bread. I just love that golden color. Um, very easy to make, as I've said a million times, <laughs> but it's true. Uh, you can't really go past something like this. Um, I left this loaf overnight, so this is the next morning when I'm cutting it. Um, if you leave your loaf at least at least a few hours, ideally even longer, like six hours, 12 hours overnight, that's the best. Because a sourdough bread, um, the inner texture of the bread takes a little while to sort of set and firm up. Um, it's not going to lose too much freshness overnight. It'll be just perfect the next morning. So you could use this for sandwiches, for um, slicing up and putting in the freezer. You could do whatever you want with this bread, just use it for your daily toast. It would be a really easy way to make bread on a regular basis using this kind of method. And there it is, beautiful. It's got quite a nice mild flavour, this loaf. Uh, it's not particularly sour, but it's got a nice well-developed sourdough taste. So I'm really happy with it. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this simple little video. Um, just goes to show what you can make with simple, inexpensive ingredients. Um, not everybody can afford to, you know, can have a flour mill and mill their own flour. So this is a nice, easy way to um, make a decent loaf of sourdough just with the basic ingredients from the supermarket. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And um, check out my playlist if you're looking to see my videos grouped by subject area. That's a really easy way to navigate my channel because I've got quite a lot of videos on different subject areas now. So check out the playlists. Thanks everyone. See you in the next video. Bye.